Now then, guys, welcome back to the Cycle Sunday podcast. Mr. Bowker up in Edinburgh. You all right, mate? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've been busy in the shop today, no doubt. Yeah, it's been really, really busy. Uh, it's been absolutely ballistic, So, which is good, 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 good. This is good news. Indeed. Now then, much has happened since our lab po- last podcast. Um, yep. Well, the most important thing is we've actually written a kind of agenda stroke script for this one, so we <laughs> kind of know what we're going to talk about, which is amazing. Yes. Um, but there's yeah, there's there's plenty of things happening um, to keep you updated about. Um, but I guess we we were just first of all going to mention we've had the response to Cycle Sunday so far, both the um, videos on on YouTube, but also the podcast has been. Has been amazing. We've had some amazing mm. um, comments and support yeah. and questions and stuff. But it's also you've had lots of people pop into the bike shop. Oh, it's been amazing, and and not just <laughs> not not just into the bike shop um, to come and see what it's all about. That's been good, uh, but also the nationwide delivery has has just absolutely taken off, and the number of customers who are ordering bikes from us, um, and we're delivering down to them. Uh, who have met us through uh, through the Petrol Ped Cycle Sunday videos and also yeah. through the Cycle Sunday podcast has just been absolutely fantastic. So, it's, so it's like, thank you to everyone. Including um, <laughs> the one that I think is really cool. I posted a picture of, uh, of Tracy on her new e-bike yes. last week. Yes. So we had our first ride out, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Yeah. Um, and then uh, someone commented about, oh, I've, I've been given the, the the permission from procurement to buy an e-bike, but I can't find one. And uh, yeah. I said, well, I'll speak to Paul. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah. And, and what was really interesting was that he um, he said, oh, yeah, it was, what, which I thought was really nice in, in the comment was that he actually said, oh, yeah, it was the first thing I did. I went on his website, but um, uh, he's not got the size that I'm after. So I sort yeah. of in, infiltrated the comments and I said, "Listen, just send, <laughs> send me send me an email." And because you know we've got two and a half thousand bikes on order, uh, so not necessarily if you see on our website uh, the bike that uh, that you're looking for, uh, I might have one just literally around the corner. I mean, I, yeah. I sold a bike today to somebody who said, "Oh, I'm after a such and such a bike, but you haven't got it in stock." I actually do have it in stock, but it arrived yesterday and I haven't had a minute to book it in. So so even before the bikes are being physically booked into stock and getting on the website, we're already taking orders for some of these. So so if you if you are after a bike and you go on our website and you go, Oh yeah, what a great choice, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for, do send me a message. Um, because the chances are yeah. you know, I might have one around the corner or a good alternative. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. That's brilliant. Uh, and um, I, I don't think we we kind of given it away, but uh, I actually uh, paid for my e bike this week, so I'm super excited. <laughs> I know because <laughs> it's, it's it's happening. It's, <laughs> well, we've got to wait a, a couple of weeks, but yes, um, it's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. So it's really really exciting. No, it's it's all very exciting. What what's what's happening and what we're going to bring to bring to the channel, but also bring to the podcast as well. Now then, what I thought we could, so um, uh, obviously Tracy's got her new e-bike and we went out for our first proper bike ride last uh, weekend yes. and then we've been out again today. Yes. Um, and how, it, I, how was I that? Think it's quite, <laughs> oh mate, I'll come to that in a moment. Okay. <laughs> I need my e-bike really quickly, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I thought it'd be quite interesting because <clears throat> um, uh, Tracy's a, a um not the most confident rider so Mm -hmm. yeah you know it's quite a big deal to go from she had a small hybrid bike before Uh, e-bikes are quite big and quite heavy so yeah um there's there's a little bit of getting used to just just having especially when it's not moving once it's moving it's fine but just handling it on the ground getting on it starting off it on it and stuff yeah takes a bit of getting used to so yesterday or last weekend we just went out for a nice gentle ride on relatively quiet flat roads just so she could get used to the the gears and the um it's quite funny because on an e-bike you've only got it's a a one by so you've got your gears on the back block Mm -hmm. um but you've also got the assistance and it's a bit like having i think in the assistance is a bit like having um like a triple on the front you know you kind of just up the amount of assistance is a bit like going down to a smaller chain ring at the front yeah yeah 
So no, so we did about 15 miles and it was just nice to just get used to the bike. And, mm. and I think it will take quite some getting used to. Yeah. She's not ridden a bike for a long time as well, which kind of coupled together that doesn't really help. Yeah, yeah. But um, she absolutely loved it. Yes. And to the point where, you know, Friday evening, um, it was like, right, but when are we going to go out on the bikes and where are we going to go and how far are we going to go? And Brilliant. super excited about getting out. And for me, it was great because we, we're out cycling together. And although we yeah. used to cycle together, yes, um, it, it was, you know, it wasn't a huge challenge for me. Mm. And we just have a nice bimble. Yes. So 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 now let's talk about today's bike ride. <laughs> um, so I, uh, now she's a bit more used to. It. I said, okay, well we'll go out because where we where we live, if we go out towards the coast, it's quite flat. But if we turn out and go out towards the downs, it's it's quite hilly. So we went went towards the downs today, and and on the flat, it's fine because I'm on. I was on my um, on my road bike, and yeah. um, more about that in a moment as well. Right. Um, and, you know, in eco mode, she's bimbling around and, and it's fine. We're doing, I don't know, 15, 16, maybe 17 miles an hour. Yep. Uh, all good. Get to the first big drag, big hill, <laughs> and I'm following on her back wheel and I'm watching and she's like, changes up some gears and I'm thinking, well, it's getting a bit steep now. And then I see her left thumb move <laughs> to the plus thing and she goes from eco into tour, yeah. right? And dropped me. <laughs> big style I'm like oi and off she went and I'm there and I get to the top of this hill and she's like oh it's really I was really putting the effort in there and I, I said I know my heart rate went to 155 <laughs> so so it was really good because now we can kind of go out on a and, and I think that was the first time she'd seen that because on the flat yeah. the eco mode is nice but I think it's only really when you get to a gradient yes. that you realise it's there. Yes. Um, but then the other thing, <laughs> which did make me giggle, I said, how's your battery? Because we haven't charged it yet. Yeah. It was delivered fully charged. Yeah. So we did 15 miles last week, and we were about 10 miles in this week. Yeah. And she went, oh, oh no, one of me blobs has gone. <laughs> <laughs> the little charge state things. So after, you know, 25 miles, yes. we'd only use one of the little charge blobs. Yes. Um, yeah. Which... So I thought that was quite funny. So it, I said, it, "You are allowed to use them, you know." She went, "No, no, I want to try and get, <laughs> I want to try and use as little assistance as I can." But it's brilliant. Yes, yeah. well, just for us to get out cycling. And I know it's the same for you and Rosie, right? Yes, it's exactly that. And and what um, and and this this for me is what e bikes is all around or all, all about. Yeah. Um, is 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 that almost kid style giddiness in fully grown adults where y- you find your cycling legs again the, the the now is no boundaries um oh he's stronger than me she's stronger than me she always drops me he always drops me um oh it's too hilly oh it's too windy oh it's this it's that it's the other i, I mm-hmm. never want to go out riding with her or i never want to go out riding with him because it's just too difficult all of those barriers are just completely eliminated it's just like um um it, it's mm-hmm. it's sort of like a level playing field and it, it it just, you know, we keep talking about it, but they are really great. And uh, it was yeah. one of the and- conversations that we had on the phone earlier in the week was that, um, you know, you said to me that you'd been on the phone to Tracy and Tracy uh, was saying, right, Pete, you need to get out on your bike. You know, not not mm-hmm. with me, but you just need to get out on your bike. You need to go and get some more exercise. You need to get you know, go out for an hour and a half. And that for me you was... Missed, you missed the killer, mate. Oh, right. You missed the extra because you're as fat as you have been for a long <laughs> time. <laughs> but the great thing is, is that I think because Tracy's now got her love for her bike and getting out cycling again, that yep. the two of you are now encouraging each other. And that's... And and that's great, cycling buddy. Yeah, it, it's it, it really is great. Um, I'm just, I'm frankly, I'm just really delighted that that Tracy is loving a bike. That that just fills yeah. me with joy. The big thing we've got to work on now yes. um, is because I know I put a a couple of pictures and video on on Insta stories of her riding, yeah. and uh, uh, quite a few people said her saddle's not high enough, and we know it's not high Correct. enough. Um, 
but again, it's a, a confidence yeah. thing. So yeah, um, I think uh, Tracy never had a, a bike when she was a no. kid, so she kind of learned to ride a bike as an adult. Yeah, yeah. And I think you take for granted. Yeah. If you learn to ride a bike as a kid, yes. you've got no fear and you just hop on yes. it and you're jumping and doing wheelies yes. and endos and all those yes. types of things. Yes. Um, so the big challenge she's got at the moment is starting off, mm-hmm. just her confidence. She needs to be sat on the saddle mm-hmm. before she strikes that first pedal yeah. and, and, and goes yeah. off. So obviously that means that the saddle's got to be low enough for her to sit mm-hmm. on, on tippy toes, yeah. Yeah. stationary. Yeah. But that means it's not high enough right. when her foot's on the pedal yeah, at yeah. the bottom of the stroke. Yeah. So what we're going to do um, tomorrow, if it's not raining, mm. is we're just going to do some exercises where yeah. um, cycling along, just get her used to standing up on the mm-hmm. pedals. So taking a weight off of the seat. Yes. And also, um, because what you, I, 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 I just find it quite interesting. It's, it's an obvious thing to anybody who cycles a yeah. lot, but that, that, that push off. So yeah. having the, the pedal at the top of the stroke, yeah stood on the ground yeah. and then you push off and lift yourself off onto the seat Correct. at the same time. Correct. So we're just going to practice that a little bit. Yeah. And then we can raise the saddle. Yes. And I think that will help because I know it, her knees aren't, aren't great and, and sure. that will help her knees yes. and her posture on the bike yeah, and all yeah. kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's fighting herself at the moment. And, and I think there's, there's probably three or four takeaways to come from that. Number one, well done peddlers um, for spotting that the saddle's too low. That's that's actually quite yeah yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's really encouraging because um, uh, you know it's it, it's good it, it's good that people are seeing that something is wrong okay so that that's 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 good so you hopefully will have your stuff right uh, number two mm-hmm. um, peddlers we know what we're doing so we know that it is wrong <laughs> but thanks for pointing out anyway yeah <laughs> yeah. Well, Interestingly, yeah. um, to add to that, when it was delivered, mm-hmm. it was the right Correct. height. Correct. And she couldn't, Trace couldn't no. get on it. So we had to drop it down yeah, a little yeah. bit and on the understanding that it would eventually come back yeah, up again. Yeah. Um, number three, uh, let's see, number three. Number three is... is, is you can count to three. That's yeah, impressive. Yeah, no, it's, it's when I get to four, that's where I struggle. So, yeah. so number three is, is the fact that I think Tracy also understands that it needs to go up. It is just purely a confidence yeah. thing. But the fourth point is, yeah. and um, well done to anybody who's also thinking, oh, that could be a good idea, and then goes, damn it, he's just said it, um, is that uh, the other thing that we're thinking of fitting to the bike is a dropper seat post. So for those folk yeah. who don't know what the heck a dropper seat post is, think of it uh, like a really posh office chair where you've got little lever that you put yeah. underneath the bottom, you put your hand underneath the uh, uh, seat part, you pull the little lever and basically it hydraulically drops down. You take your weight, you bum out the seat and yeah. pull the handle and it goes back up again. That is what a dropper seat post is on a bicycle. And the lever actuation is on the handlebar. And again, when you put your bum into the seat, it drops the saddle down when you depress the lever. And then when you take your bum off the uh, saddle and push the lever it then goes back up again and now they are designed really for more yeah. technical mountain biking so it actually gets the saddle out of the way when you're doing steeper technical descents however one thing that Ro- when he's shredding not uh, when you're shredding not but one thing that um rosie's always enjoyed about uh, the dropper seat post is the fact that when she does come to a stop she literally, just before she comes to a stop, she hits the button, drops it, uh, the, the saddle down, and she can put feet down on the ground. She gets going again, takes bum out of the saddle, lifts it up, and then she's back into a full height extension. So, you know, we've we've also had conversations yeah. about fitting one of those to uh, Tracy's bike as well. So, yeah, all good. Cool. Yeah, no. I mean, she's just, she's loving it. And I think it's now, uh, what's really cool is, now we're building up the confidence and, and it's also just, you know, confidence about being on a main road. We don't have like, we wouldn't go on like mega A roads, but some of the roads around here are quite yeah. busy. So once we've got that, we can, we can start using round trip routing on the Garmin yeah. and, uh, and start doing, you know, we did, we would have done a bit longer today, mm. but we, we came back, she had a bit of a, a tight shoulder. Mm. So um, we, we came back a, a bit earlier than we planned, yeah. but it's just ace. Uh, and it, it, for me, I had a really good workout today. We did 15 or so yeah. miles. We did two or three quite big draggy yeah. climbs. And, you know, we both ended up having a really good yes. workout and, and cycled together and yeah. had fun. And yeah. it's ace. I can't wait to Brilliant. do more. 
Um, and what's really interesting, I know I've got an e-bike coming, but um, I, on a longer ride, if I went out on a non-e-bike, mm. be that my gravel bike or the, the mm. road bike, um, I know that I'm going to act, actually have quite a hard yes. ride, um, and you know, and that's great because sometimes if you've only got the time to have one ride on a you know a day or yeah. one ride at the yeah. weekend, um, you kind of want it to be one that you really push yourself, yes. and that that makes you less inclined to go out with with your other half if it's just yes, a pinball. That's right. So I know that's not going to be the case anymore because I'm going to have to have my A game yes. with me. Otherwise, she's going to destroy yeah, me. <laughs> but but it's also the fact that Tracy rides while you're having a really hard session. and But but Tracy's yeah. having, a, as you quite rightly said, a really good workout. But there's no, but she yeah. didn't get emotional on the, I knew, I knew we shouldn't have gone this way. Oh, no, no. We've had one Indeed. of those before. Slightly yeah, and we now. spoke about that. Um, on, yeah. yeah, no, it was... We, we, yeah, oh, right. no, sorry, sorry yeah. buddy. No, it, uh, yeah, it, it, we, yeah. we spoke about that on on one of the podcasts in in the fact that yeah. um, you, you know you went on that ride and uh, you said, "Oh, we'll go home this way." And Tracy, before you decided to go home that way, said, "I know which hill that is, and I really don't want to go up it." And you said, "That will be fine." <laughs> and halfway up, Tracy It'll said, be fine. "It's be not right. fine," <laughs> and was a, and was a little <laughs> bit emotional with um, with Mister Greaves. <laughs> She got a bit emotional, yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, no, it, but it's yeah. good fun. However, However, another bike ride this mm. week, mate. I Although and on Tracy's first ride last weekend, I rode the yes. Architex. We only did 15 miles on the road, and it was more me just getting used to it and, yeah. and stuff. I took it out yes. midweek uh, for its first proper yes. ride. Oh, my days. Like it. Oh, mate, I, I can't. It's quite difficult to, without gushing too mm. much, describe all the things I like okay. about it. Well, firstly, there's some obvious things I'm going to say. On mm. the road, it feels just like a road bike. Okay. I, I there's no, it doesn't feel like it's got any more rolling resistance. It's the frame size is so right for me compared with my Venge. Okay. I can feel that I've got the right bike size, which is, which is really yes. interesting, because you know you you size that bike. I know we didn't do a bike mm. fit for that sure. bike. But you used all my measurements from my bike Correct. fit to kind of pretty much get it get it where yeah. it needed to be. Um, I need I, I raised the saddle maybe five yeah. five mil maybe something like maybe yeah. ten mil, um, and that that feels so yeah. much better. So where where I live, we've got some really nice bits I enjoy going on my mountain bike, and we've got some nice bits I enjoy going on the road. A couple of the mountain bike bits I don't go on one of them very very often on my mountain bike because to get there is a bit of a drag right. on the road and doing that on a mountain bike is a pain yeah. in the bum so i went on the, this ride on the on the architex um, and the, within the first couple of miles there's a really long drag up a chalk lane it's called chalk pit lane up onto a local hill called the trundle and it's a big old off-road you couldn't take a road okay. bike up there and compared with my mountain bike i flew up there i haven't actually looked at my strava okay. segment but I absolutely flew up there. It was amazing. Yes. And then you get to the top, drop off the trundle, get onto some uh, onto some road, and then you do a bit of road work, and you're flying along on the road, and then you get into some woodland trails, and you're flying along. It was yes. just mega. I, I had such a lovely ride. And then then right at the end, I then the last sort of probably five to eight miles was just all road work yeah. all the way home. Um, and it was great. <laughs> and I love it. Absolutely brilliant. It's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It, I, I don't know where to not to say much yeah. more than that. Really, they, they just are, and I, I think I think the thing is, a lot of people when the, when gravel bikes came out, I think so many people just went, "I don't know what a gravel bike is. I don't get gravel bike." Um, yeah. you, you know, if you if you're going off road, you might as well use a mountain bike. If you're going on road, then use a road bike. You know, this is just rubbish. It's just it's marketing spiel. It's just more bikes to it, it's. You know, it's all of those sorts of things. I haven't met a single person who's actually gone, I'm going to buy a gravel bike, buy a gravel bike, and say anything other than what you've just said. Um, if you get a really good quality gravel the, bike, that it just allows you from your front yeah. door to just go and explore yeah. and almost be a kid again. Yeah. And uh, here's the thing. So, um, you know, if you want to go road biking, yeah. buy a road bike. Yeah, great. If you want to go mountain biking, yeah. buy a mountain bike. 
great. But you've got to do those two things on separate yes. bike rides. Buy a gravel yeah. bike, you can, in the same bike ride, go road biking yes. and mountain biking. It's yeah. ace. Yeah, it's just different. It's just good fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, there are, it takes some getting used to. One of the things that I found really interesting as well is um, I'm, on a, I'm on a road bike yeah. format. The brakes on the Arca decks are like, hey, look, let's put this disc brake versus rim brake thing to bed. The braking power on the Arca decks compared with my rim brakes on yeah. my Venge, it's like yeah. night and day. I came, I was on the road and I came up to a tight turn to drop down onto a woodland path and it came up on me a bit quicker yeah. than I thought. And I, ha- I hang on, <laughs> hung on the brakes, back wheel right. locked up. And it was like, oh, okay, yes. they're good then. Um, so the braking power, yeah. much better. When it was in, I went through some lovely woods near me. And that's, again, why it was nice, really long woodland oh, trails. Wow. And then he dropped down this hill. But it, it got a bit wet and greasy and mm. horrible at the bottom. And it, it does follow ruts a little bit more than a, than yes. a mountain bike. You do have to be a bit more careful when it's yes. slippy and, and yeah. muddy and stuff. So the bike behaves very differently yes. underneath you. And the you're on a drop handlebar, so narrower, your hands are closer together. So it's going to take some getting used to just the techniques yeah. of it. But it weighs probably half what my mountain yes. bike does. It's just yeah. so light and yeah. so nimble. Um, and the gear yes. range um, is great. I could do with maybe, you know, couple more on the granny gear but you know that's just me okay. not being fit yeah. enough um but yeah no it's brilliant i'm absolutely delighted right. i love it I, I really love it i came back and and i was like wow i get gravel <laughs> bikes now and i can't wait so next yep. weekend um i'm going away with my mate dino into the cotswolds brilliant. and we're, we're gravel biking brilliant. for the weekend uh, and we'll, we'll be filming that for cycle sunday so uh, I can't wait because I, I, it's just we just have Brilliant. such an adventure. Uh, I'm just chuffed a bit. Um, so yeah, no, it's 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 really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, although I was going to go out on it today, <laughs> God, I'm telling you this. So uh, I thought I'd just quickly put a, check the pressures, put a tiny bit more, maybe a bit more air in the in the tires because they haven't had any air yeah. in them for a couple of weeks. Um, and I took the valve cap off the front wheel, um, and the valve and the valve cap came off at the same time and flew across. Flew across the garden, never yeah. to be seen again. And I was like, yes. oh, I'll be going out on my road bike then because we were literally just Got about you. to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it can yeah. it can sometimes happen if the um, if if the valve cores themselves. Um, it's 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 really quite rare. And the boys, they they, they all check them in the in in the PDI and what have you. But you just sometimes get the occasional valve core that's a little bit. Um, uh, a little bit looser than others, and uh, it's it's happy. Yeah. Ah, it's all good. I it was like I knew yeah. what it was. It yeah. was like oh, okay, that's fine. I had a spare tube, so when I got back, I, I put another tube in it, Brilliant. and it's, it's all good to go now. But, <laughs> um, uh, and then because I was like, I, I, what? <laughs> I'm going to have to go and buy a valve removal tool because I thought I had one and I can't find it, so I need to go and buy one because I've got right. an old inner tube in uh, yes. in my shed, and I'm going to take the valve core out of that and stick it in the. The old one, so yeah, I think cool. we use the excellent old. stuff. Well, if you've, uh, but yeah, yeah no, send so, me a WhatsApp uh, um, about that, and um, I will send you one down. I'm going to put an order in. Actually, I'm going to cool. order some bits. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, gravel bikes, uh, they they rock, man. And I've had lovely, some lovely comments on on uh, Insta and Facebook as well. It's it's a good looking bike. It was funny. I had one of those knowing nods. I could see this roadie yeah. coming towards me. And I could just see from miles away it was on a Bianchi because it Brilliant. was Celeste. Uh, and, and I was seeing it. And I think he spotted I was on a Bianchi as well. And as we crossed, we had this admiring glances it, of each lovely. other's bikes. Like, yeah. It is lovely. Bianchi. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, a, it's a very, yeah, very well good done. bike. So. Cool. So what's on next on your list then, dude? Cool. So we've kind of uh, updated people on amazing right, riding. Have let's have a look. This is this is most unusual that this um, is good. you know we've actually so got... we've covered uh, point number one. We've just done point number two. Oh, oh, right. So a oh, couple uh, of bits of trek news. Oh, okay. Number one, there is quite okay. a lot of stuff from both trek 
and Bontrager. So for those people who don't know, yeah. Bontrager is named after probably one of the greatest physicists in the cycle industry ever. A guy called no, Albert Einstein. A, a, guy, a guy called Keith Bontrager. Oh. And Keith Bontrager, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. that guy, yeah. Uh, so Keith Bontrager, he's just he's he's an engineer, inventor. He, he, he's just an incredible fellow. I've met him a couple of times, and uh, he does a huge amount of uh, uh, design and development work with Trek under his Bontrager brand. And Bontrager is the parts, clothing, and accessory wing for Trek. And you've had a number of Bontrager things so far, and you've really liked it. Mate, while yeah. we're on that subject yes. then, two things. So I've, uh, thanks to Trek UK, I'm running uh, the the Bontrager yeah. cycle helmet with yeah. the wave, wave cell, wave cell, technology, it's wave cell yeah. technology, isn't it? Mate, it, it's it's really good. I mean, it, it's it's a really comfortable comfortable um hat and it it's it feels really substantial yeah. so that's lovely and the um yes. mountain bike shoes yes they are ace yes. so yeah so i'm i'm loving i'm loving my bond Trager bond Trager stuff Trager stuff. well they are about to launch something it's under mm-hmm. embargo till the 8th of july right this goes out before then does it the 8th of july no yeah, when's the no, 8th of July? No, this goes out on the 27th of June. Yeah. So it's under embargo until the 8th of July. Correct. Yeah, so you can't talk about it. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What well, is it? Well, that's the point. I'm going... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I was thinking, but you can't... Do you not know about that? You can't talk no, exactly. about embargo and stuff before no, the embargo. This no, that's my point. Tomorrow. That's my point. This is I'm setting up a teaser. Right. It's oh, the on. first it's the first cycle oh, Sunday. Okay. <laughs> you see right, listeners, it's you exclusive. see what happens when Pete and me actually have a list and an agenda. It all goes Pete Tong. <laughs> Nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna? Yeah, carry Sorry. on. I'll just no, I'll yeah. just ignore it. I... <laughs> so for <laughs> for another podcast, I'm going to tell everybody what it is. I know it's so professional. But my goodness, it has what they are about to launch has almost just replaced my favourite thing over Scarlett Johansson. It is that gorgeous. Oh yeah, yeah, really. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I didn't Indeed. Know. So, um, no. So, look out for a lot of new Bontrager stuff that is about to be launched. It is next level. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so... Cool. I love the fact you know I, what it I is know. and you can't yeah, tell yeah. anyone. But one thing that we can talk about, because it's uh, Trek are using it in the, uh, in the tour... Um, so Trek Project One. Yeah. Does everybody know what Trek Project yes. One is? For those who don't, let's talk about it. We've talked about yeah. it a few times. If Indeed. You don't, you should have so been Trek listening. Project One is Trek's custom bike program, and it allows you to get the factory frames, whether it be Imonda uh, road bike uh, in the SLR spec, uh, Demane SLR, and Madone SLR. So they're the road, uh, but you can also get a number of mountain bikes on uh, on the Project One. Uh, uh, script as well so it allows you to choose a huge amount of uh, custom items on your bike allows you to get gear ratios uh, wheels and all of those sorts of things what gear ratios am i having on my bike again massively appropriate but the other thing that you completely missed in the another whatsapp that i sent to you this uh, weekend (laughs) and i am so surprised you didn't immediately jump on it yeah, so I'm going to let you have a look at that. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, oh, this go is going to be it, a big right, reveal. Yeah. So, with the Trek Project One, uh, one of the things that they um, that that Trek do is they have artists who do the icon paintwork, 
an icon paintwork when anybody looks at this on the track project one site is eye-wateringly expensive and a lot of folk go i'm not spending that amount of money on paint however if you knew what went into an icon paint work on a frame you'd go how are they doing it for just that amount of money it is gorgeous but for this tour They've just yeah. launched two new colours, which I'm, I'm actually going to read because I keep forgetting. Uh, but it's called the Ruby and Sapphire Chroma Paint. And it basically is this chromed blue and red. And you'll see it on the tour bikes, but you can now order your Project One road bike with this new Icon Chroma Paint. And it looks sensational. So, in the comments, just uh, search out the um, those the, the the photos of those bikes, and just let us know what you think because they look flipping amazing. To, I can't find any. I can't find anything in my WhatsApp that's, that's okay. Well, that's lit my let pants. me read the WhatsApp that I sent to you. Because did did you um. While you're doing that, did you see the tour today? I need to tune into the highlights because there was a massive crash thanks to someone trying to take a selfie in joking? front of the Peloton. Really? Oh, it's just <laughs> yeah. So the last WhatsApp that I sent you, which was I think yesterday, yeah, it says, "Oh, also there might have been a small delivery from Campag today." I've not had that. Oh, what? It's got two ticks what? next to it. He's looking back on the phone, guys. For, yeah. For, oh, for my the, God. Those... Hold on. Um... <laughs> oh, they're not... oh, my God. Totally yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought my phone was going to be absolute. What What? What kind of... <laughs> Hold on. Breaking news. Breaking news. Do, 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 do. What, 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 um, what kind of it's delivery? It's under embargo until next. <laughs> Scratch this. Forget your list. What, what kind of delivery? <laughs> this is important. <laughs> Is it, if it's a new T-shirt or a new hoodie, I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I went up to Goodwood today. So just I know we're, we're rambling here, but I've got this Honda NSX at yes. the moment, which we need to talk about in a moment. Oh, my days. But there's a an amazing guy um, called Peter Saywell, who's a local businessman, and he's got the most mm. incredible supercar collection. I mean, he's got... He's got a beautiful Pagani Zonda, but oh, he's wow. got a LaFerrari. Uh, today, he had a, a 488 Pista and a wow. 765 LT. Uh, he's got a 918 Spider. He's got an amazing collection. He does these uh, track days, um, charity track days, about three or four times a year at Goodwood. Um, and it's how I started YouTube, really. But I popped right. up there with the NSX today. And about three people came up to me and went, uh, Hey, Ped, Ped, great to meet you. Really? When are you getting the bike? <laughs> Where's the components really? for your bike? Oh, that's brilliant! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people are like, "Where's your bike, gone, Pete?" <laughs> so the so Cycle Sunday is now upstaging a dude with a LaFerrari. I know, basically, and and yeah. me turning up in an NSX. Yeah. Forget the NSX. Oh, Where's your bike? <laughs> um, so this stuff from yeah. from Trek yeah. sounds good. Then, so Project One. Let's let. Uh, or, or are we going to talk about this Bianchi? Are you going to keep me keep, keep, keep me hanging? <laughs> <laughs> Does it mean I can well, come look, up to Edinburgh soon? It, it's not all here, but it's 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 dribbling okay. through. So to so yeah, so what did you get? The power pack has now arrived. So the 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 actual right. that's the brain and the battery of the Campag EPS system. So that's now arrived. Yeah. The crank set has arrived and the bottom bracket cups have arrived oh okay so by no means it's an ability to start really putting the bike together yet but it is really no. good to know that um that that now some of the components are really starting to accelerate through yeah good Excellent. And the cranks are the sexy carbon bit, right? I might so. send you a little photo. Oh, I could put it on I social. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might send you a little photo. <laughs> oh, that's great news, though. 
because we weren't expecting anything till the end of the year. Correct. So yeah. So so no, it is good. It, it'll all come through except for that tiny little screw. We yeah. Need. Yeah. Well. Uh, so no, it, it's really good. And and but I, what staggered me more than anything was the fact that I put that at the bottom of the WhatsApp and you didn't immediately jump on it. That's. Uh, I just didn't. I, I didn't no. read. But I didn't obviously uh, didn't no. register. I was yes, tired I know, yesterday. I know. I know. Bless um, you. Right. So, so, come on, so, so, we've got some questions as well. I think. Yes. Haven't we? So we're now. Or have you finished your? Yeah, track we've stuff? finished all of that stuff. We are now on to customer questions, yeah. and I wish more oh, people would send us through um, these because they're they're really helpful, um, and these questions yeah. are really good. So. This is from a really good customer of ours um, who owns an Ultra XR4 with... Excellent. Has he got Campag? No, he's actually on his bike. He's got SRAM uh, Force Axis. So he's gone for the SRAM electronic drivetrain that we also built as a custom Ooh, build. Yeah, right. yeah. So this is a... Yeah. This is, the wireless yeah, one. Yeah, this is the wireless one. And he's... Mm got a bike that he's he's got a gravel bike that he's just put uh shimano grx on with um w- as a yeah. one by his shram force axis is a two by 12 for his road bike yeah and that's sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna jump yeah. in here one yes. by is just one chain ring at Correct. the front and a cassette of gears Correct. at the back Two by is two chain rings at the front and a cassette of, in that case, twelve yeah, gears. At the correct. Top. And then if somebody giving you twenty four gears, yes. Total. So, so yeah, exactly. So it's, and he then uh, came up with a number of good talking points and some really great questions that then came from that. And the first, the first one because. Each electronic drivetrain manufacturer puts their own take on what a customer wants and their own functionality. Yeah. And it, it it's really quite interesting how the different manufacturers piece together components as to what they think a customer wants to buy. So... Right. I, I thought I'd unpack that a little bit. So your three main yeah. electronic drivetrain components at the moment is uh, Shimano with their DI2 system, which is a... Yeah, and that's in Ultegra and that's correct. Durace. So they do that in Ultegra and yeah. Durace. They also have a mountain drivetrain, which is electronic, which is in XT and XTR levels. However, right. Shimano completely separate... Oh, sorry, actually, I've missed one. They've also got GRX for the Gravel series in a DI2 as well. So they have th- three systems. Yeah. They have the Gravel GRX system, which is available in a single chainring format, so one by, or a two by system they do the mountain bike system which is xt and xtr and they do uh the road system which is ultegra and dura race what's interesting is that shimano is a fully wired system so each component is wired together which is fine, but Shimano treat their road, gravel, and mountain bike systems as completely standalone product lines. So, so there, you can't correct. There is no cross compatibility yeah. within those three genres of drivetrain. Okay, so that's okay. one way of doing it. You know, if you want, if you're riding a mountain bike, buy our mountain bike system. If you've got a gravel bike, buy our gravel system. If you've got a road bike, 
by our road system. And Shimano will turn around and say, because we have designed our products to work the very best for those scenarios, which is, which is, which is valid and that's, that's, that's a good thing. SRAM, however, have come uh, to their AXIS system, their AXS system, um, in a very different way. So uh, the SRAM system is fully wireless. Now, there's a number of benefits mm -hmm. to that in the fact that when you're building a bike such as the um, uh, such as a fully integrated road bike where uh, you've got integrated carbon bar, carbon stem, all of the wiring and what have you is running internally through the frame, uh, your main benefits to having a fully wireless system is the fact that if there is a problem with the electronics within a SRAM group set, it can only be one of four things. It could be the left-hand shifter, the right-hand shifter, the front derailleur, or the rear derailleur. The end. Yeah. Whereas on yeah. a Shimano DI2 yeah. system, it could be those four elements, or it could be any one of the wires that is connecting those systems <laughs> as well. Yeah. Now, if... Yeah. So to diagnose where that fault is coming from, it can involve a full strip down of a fully integrated bike. Yeah. I mean, it, and your bike builder's never going to talk to you well, ever and, again. And it, it's hours. I mean, hours of labor. So for me, our technicians and our, our bike builders absolutely love SRAM um, uh, wireless systems because it is it, it, it basically is a completely standalone system. And uh, they run their system through an app. So to uh, update your firmware and software, uh, you do that through the SRAM Axis app and it's done off any smartphone anywhere in the world and it works very, very well. And the other thing is you can... Uh, the system automatically talks to uh, any Garmin device as well. So um, it automatically uploads to a Garmin head unit. So it connects to a Garmin head unit and gives you your, um, uh, yeah. your gear system and all, um, uh, your gear range and your battery status and all of that sort of stuff out of the box. You don't have to buy yeah. an extra dongle like you did for your um, your DI2, and like you, you still have to do for a DI2 yeah. system. Uh, the new Ant Plus dongle is yeah. a WU111, and you have to join it with a 150 millimeter um, uh, extra cable, and that's wired into the system. And and then you have to plug it into the diagnostic stuff software and upload the firmware that everything talks to each other. So it's a little bit more involved. However. On the Shimano yeah. system, on the latest Durace and Ultegra models, there are two little buttons. Oh, I'm sorry. Also the, the GRX um, uh, DI2 as well. There are two tiny little yeah. micro buttons in the left hand and the right hand shifter, which when paired to your Garmin using the WU111 and plus dongle, you can then scroll through left and right your Garmin pages and your Garmin screens without taking your hands off the handlebars using the two little micro buttons. You can also configure the micro buttons to either have one press, uh, a double tap, or a press and hold, which means you can therefore have up to three individual functions for either button. So you can have a press and hold on the right, for example, that will always take you back to your navigation screen for a fast upload. You can use one configuration to start and stop your Garmin. So, so they're fully configurable buttons. But SRAM doesn't have those buttons. So you can't, even yeah. though you can integrate with your Garmin, you then can't control your Garmin from. So you go, hang on. Shimano's had this for a number of years. Why didn't SRAM think of that? Why did SRAM think it's not important? Then you've got Campag yeah. with their EPS, with their electronic transmission, which basically doesn't talk to Garmin's at all and doesn't have any buttons. 
So, because... Yeah, yeah, indeed, but it's Italian. Indeed. So, hey. um, Campag works on the basis of... Well, that, yeah. that, that, that one of my questions I don't need to answer then. It was like, do I need to buy a dongle yeah. from the EPS? Well, Campag works no. on the basis that, no, because you should just be... Fo- We're a drivetrain manufacturer. We are building a phenomenal drivetrain, and the drivetrain is phenomenal. Uh, you know, we don't make... Garmin head units or Wahoo head units, so why do we need to talk to them? It's just, and and that was the customer's point, really, is that you've got three different, you've you've got three different manufacturers building what is effectively the same thing, an electronic transmission. Oh, yeah. and the other thing is, is that the SRAM axis is a fully modular system, so their mountain bike gravel and road systems can if you get the right combinations can all work together yeah yeah so you can create you know massive range one by 12 with big cassette road bikes if you wanted to you you, yeah you can you can create (laughs) two by 12 cross-country mountain bikes if you wanted to you can create um one by 12 drop handlebar configurations or one by 12 or two by 12 flat handlebar configurations everything is designed to be modular and pair together so that was the customer's point really as part of his first question is you've got three manufacturers building three electronic drivetrain systems but with three completely different ways of getting to the same net effect and yeah and i wonder whether an element of that is is a bit of differentiation yes. being different from from the other guy um do you um yeah uh, here's a question for you do you get i mean there's we haven't. I don't think mm. we've talked about this at all. What I've just referred to as brand loyalty. So, um, you know, do you get some people who come in and uh, and it, uh, for now we're talking about brand loyalty yes. with yes. group set manufacturers, and they'll come in and they are Shimano yes. or Die. You know, they wouldn't consider having yeah. Shram yeah. or Campag, and and you know, obviously yeah. that could be the same for the other three. Is that is that a fairly common thing? Because I get the feeling that. That, that there is, and we've had mm. a few comments about the bike build, or why didn't you put yeah. Shimano on there, yeah, or yeah. why didn't you put Shram on there? Um, I, I get the feeling it's a little bit of, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that brand. Yeah, you always get waving. that. I mean, um, and that's been the, the thing with uh, the comments in Cycle Sunday is, you know, almost the relief when we when we revealed that we were putting Campag on... Uh, on on your on your on your <laughs> frame, Italian bike. and it was it was it was almost relief that the fact that um, you know oh it's, thank goodness for that you're having an Italian drivetrain on your Italian bike. Yeah. However, there hasn't been a single person on your comment. This is really fascinating. There hasn't been a single person on your um, uh, stories or. And if there has, I apologise, but I, I haven't seen a comment on any of your Archidex posts or on any of the gravel bike videos that says, why hasn't your bike got Campa yeah. Eckar, which is a new 1x13 group from uh, from Campag. So it's really funny. You've got this road bike mentality, which is... You've got to have, you know, it's all about road bike etiquette. But when you start moving into gravel, the, you know, the waters are muddied slightly and people start start to move away yeah. from, it's almost a bit out of the comfort zone, I think. So it's almost a case of, oh, I don't really get what gravel bike is. So if it's been built that way, I'm... Yeah. And I guess we haven't, we haven't put too much video no. content out about my Archidex, but actually, if you look at mine, yeah. it's an Archidex yeah. by Bianchi. It's got a Shimano yeah. GRX group set and Indeed. Bontrager finishing Indeed. kit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. and all the, the comments um, have been so. ignited with is, that looks sweet, 
that looks a great bike. Hope you're enjoying it. Oh, I really like the look of that. That's all we've got. Yeah. Whereas when we when we highlighted the, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the 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 Bianchi build on the XR4, it's oh thank goodness you went for Celeste. Oh thank yeah. goodness you went for Campag. Oh, if, you know, it... oh, yeah. and then we put French tires on it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, it, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I I find it I find it fascinating. I, I think there's the the territorial thing. Um, uh, it's quite funny actually today because we we're out on the bike and we went past quite a yeah. few big groups of roadies uh, and, and a couple of mountain bikers as well. But obviously got Tracy on a, on an e bike and me on my on my Venge yeah. and all my all my gear and 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 the, some some a, a group of lads went past and they're like, all right and they yes. were really lovely and chatty and stuff and yeah. it was just nice seeing everybody out. There was a, a, a group on a corner and they were all looking at Tracy and as I went past, just went, "It's great. It's like having my own derny bike to follow. It's fantastic." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, uh, it's, it, I think I think I, I quite enjoy the tribalism that yes. you get in, in cycling uh, yeah. to some level well you anyway. have it sometimes with mountain bikers with yeah. um, oh I would never ride a 29 or, or I'd never ride a bike with 27 and a half and oh you need this amount of suspension travel and oh I'm, I'm a rock shops rider oh I'm a fox rider and the thing is I mean, genuinely, if everybody's honest, I mean, properly honest, all of this kit, when you get to a certain level, is so much better than 95% of the people who are on board, right? And, and Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, <laughs> oh, and that's the thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I've got... Uh, and that's been... And that's a video coming soon to Cycle Sunday uh, with with... Rosie and my rail 9.5s because one of the things it, being working in the bike shop you, you just get real snobby about the kit that you have and one of the things that has absolutely blown me away so far and I don't want any spoilers really one of the things that have blown me away about this new rail is the fact that we've ordered the, we all we got the bikes and you're about to um uh you know we've got got the bikes and the kit is absolutely entry level on it. it. It's basic, basic stuff. And the thing that has blown me away more than anything else is just how good basic kit now is. So we have all, yeah. So we have all this snobbery yeah, yeah. Yeah. about, oh, you've got to be at this level and that level and the other level. And yeah, it's phenomenal. But even the basic kit now is just great. Right, we've got seven minutes left, dude. What's the next question? Well, have we got another question? Do we have another question? Yeah. Another question so about the next bit was one by or two by drivetrains which is the best i think do you know what i i think you would be a good person because you have ridden your archidex which is a one by 11 over the last yeah. few days and you've just ridden your two by so 11 on your road bike today what's your yeah. thoughts Um, it's quite interesting actually. So I think on a road bike, I think just the the yeah. extra range of gears between top and bottom and the gradient or the, yes. the, the steps between them, I think a two by on a road yeah. bike is the way forward. Uh, and and I, I you know, I, I was quite interesting because I was behind I was on my on my bench behind Tracy today and thought, well actually I don't know on the Archidex whether I would either have run yeah. out of gears or not had enough. However, on a yeah. off road, so I can only compare to my uh, full suspension yeah. mountain yeah. bike, which has a two by. And when mm -hmm. we go out, when I go out with Dan, he's got a one by on his um, yeah. mountain bike. And especially around here, the mud's quite in the winter. The mud's right. quite claggy and cluggy, yeah. and it, it kind of sticks on the bike. Uh, and and my two by drivetrain yeah. gets clogged up quite quickly, whereas yeah. Dan's very rarely does. And I just think it just psychologically mm -hmm. looks lighter mm -hmm. and and more simple um but i don't i i, I think from a gear mm -hmm. ratios point of view the archidex doesn't have the bottom end first gear that's you know uh, as low as sure as my mountain bike yes but it's lighter and and that's just a case of me needing to man up yeah. a bit more i think so 
I think for that gravel bike, mountain bike thing, you know, and you look at the range of gears, I don't know what mm. the, you might, you'll probably know what the teeth difference is between top yeah. and bottom on my yeah, yeah. Next, but it's vast. And I look yeah. on Tracy, Tracy's e-bike, the, the big cog on the, on the rear cassette on Tracy's e-bike is as big as the front chain ring yeah, on yeah. my road yeah, bike. It's indeed. massive. And that's the thing. And, and I think you've hit, you've so, hit the nail on the head and it's usually my summary when it comes to it is that on a road bike where cadence which is effectively uh, your crank speed, uh, your revs per minute. Your cadence is a, is is a lot more. Yeah. It needs to be more detailed, and that's where having uh, yeah. the two chain rings, which is is your big steps in gear range, and then fine yeah. tuning with a very close ratio set of gears on the back um, is. Um, is is yeah. more important. Whereas when you're riding off road, it just tends to be right. Okay, I need an easy gear. I now need an easy gear. I now need an easy gear. And if there's more step in between those gears, it's yeah. it's slightly less um, less important. Uh, however, yeah. as you start now getting into these twelve and thirteen speed ratios, this is where it's getting fascinating. Because where cadence is really important is at the uh, at, at the lower end of the at, at the rear cassette, uh, whereas when you start getting into the, the the bigger diameter cogs on the rear cassette, it starts to then become less important because obviously the ground speed is going to be a lot less because you need, need an easier gear. Um, so, for example, on yeah. your new Bianchi road set, the rear cassette on your Bianchi, the first, because it's 12 speed, the first seven cogs. Yeah. So is there's only one tooth difference between your ultimate top gear and the seventh cog further up. And the step changes only start to become Um. bigger as you start ramping up into your, um, into your lower gears on the rear cassette. So, because I guess you live in that bottom kind of seven gears, correct? Right? Most of the correct. time, correct. On on a road bike, yeah, where you're where you're flying along a flat uh, or a descent, and your your cr- your cruising speed tends to be out of chain ring, and in those bottom seven cogs, your 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 seventh highest gears. So that's where cadence is really key because you're riding a wave of aerobic to anaerobic sort of. Uh, performance mm. levels so that's where it's really important yeah. to have that finite balance and you can now start doing that with one by 12 and one by 13 drivetrains that you never could on one by nine one by 10 one by 11 even because you, you you've got that lower finite range uh, but then you've got your bigger steps further up so it's it's yeah. get it's getting interesting it really is getting interesting what what where 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 the market's going so one by two by which is the best mm, it, it's still very personal and it's at, and it's still very genre specific as well uh you know pure yeah. road versus um uh, versus gravel versus mountain um and then the final yeah. part to um uh, the customer's question uh, it's campbell by the way campbell shout out to you my friend um is rear derailleurs um, a lot yeah. of the off-road systems, so whether it be gravel, uh, so your Arcadex, for example, the Shimano GRX, or the mountain bike variants of derailleurs, now have what we call clutches built into the rear derailleur. And um, I'll be interested uh, to note your thoughts on this, Peter, because... I think, if I remember rightly, your mountain bike doesn't have a clutch in the rear derailleur. Am I correct? I don't think right. so. It's seven years seven old. Seven years now, old. So. Yeah. I mean, you're you're on the cusp of when when clutches were starting to come into um, uh, in, into effect, but it, it probably wouldn't have. So when you ride your mountain bike off road, um, the rear derailleur is only limiting its forward and backward motion by the spring tension um, in the in the rear derailleur so when you ride off-road 
your derailleur is actually flapping forwards and backwards against its own spring. And that is what allows the chain to slap up and down and hit your, uh, your frame. And ultimately, if you get it wrong and you're traveling at speed and the, and, and the chain's flapping about, the chain can then fall off the chain ring. Does that all ring yeah. true? Whereas on your Archidex, uh, in the rear derailleur, there is a clutch built into that pivot uh, that massively stiffens up the chain retention. And it, you'll have probably noticed when you rode the bike off-road, particularly when starting to descend down again, uh, that the, the chain retention and the noise um, on the transmission is so much quieter. You don't get that chain slap. And one thing that I can pretty much guarantee for sure, you won't have lost the chain. The chain will have um, will have stayed on the bike, no problem at all. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and that's what, on a mountain bike and a gravel bike, the clutch is there for, um, is to basically hold the chain tent under much more tension than we ever used to get. Yeah. And it's probably one of the best, well, the, the, there's been a lot of... Um, uh, inventions and additions to uh, uh to bikes over the years but dropper seat posts clutches disc brakes one by transmissions all these sorts of things are really moving the game forward so those folk who have got their you know seven to ten year old bikes who goes oh it's absolutely great you know there's there's nothing gonna be better than this out there go and ex- go and explore a new bike guys i found that out yeah <laughs> on the architect this yeah. week well, mate, time has flown mm. by. It's a, it's an hour has oh. gone. Because <laughs> I always like to try and keep sure. these an hour so we don't don't keep yeah. it for too long. Mate, we've covered lots of ground. So. Lots and lots of ground. Yes. Yeah, so I love the questions. Uh, so anybody, questions, uh, reach out um, on Instagram. Um, just send me a DM on Instagram or, or go to Criterium Cycles Instagram feed, send them a DM and we'll we'll cover questions. I quite like the little questions at the end. Yeah, uh, That's quite cool. They're very, topics very good. To cover. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah, I like the interaction. Yeah. And most importantly, everybody, and we are now going to, without sounding boring, we're going to say this every single week. Subscribe, like, share, go to all of the podcast channels, leave us a five-star review yes. if you like it. Do all yeah. of this. We have to grow this channel. Help us. I oh, know the podcast is is yeah. We need we need more more listeners and more viewers. So Indeed. so tell all your friends. Yeah. So if you like and it, join us next. Yes, week. and join us next week. <laughs> Excellent. Well, mate, um, it's been a pleasure as always. Yeah. But it comes that time when I say I've been Pete Greaves and I've been Paul Bowker. Ride safe, guys. Ride safe, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>